Hi, I'm David Fisher, and I'm here once again with PIMCO's Group CIO, Dan Iveson, to talk about some of the recent conversations taking place in PIMCO's Investment Committee, or IC. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Thanks, David. So, Dan, PIMCO is forecasting a strong recovery in global economic growth. And investors, of course, are looking for ways to take advantage of this growth. But the increase in asset prices has left valuations in many cases quite full. So how is the IC thinking about the opportunities and risks for investors in this environment? Sure. So you're absolutely right, David. Uh, we do anticipate a pretty powerful growth recovery later this year. Our outlook's predicated on continued success against the uh, COVID uh, virus, uh, which will mean more efficient vaccine dissemination across further uh, regions of the globe. So that's a pretty positive setup for markets. But as you mentioned, a lot of this has been priced into significant portions of the overall opportunity set. Uh, there's been massive central bank policy accommodation. Financial conditions remain quite loose. And for that reason, we've seen a lot of the yield-oriented segments of the market rally quite significantly over the last 12 months. So although we remain optimistic on the growth picture, we do think it's time to begin to take some chips off the table, particularly in some of those sectors that have led the recovery, uh, more generic forms of investment-grade credit, high-yield credit as examples, and beginning to concentrate more on some of the cyclical sectors, which will benefit from this growth resurgence, and some sectors of the market that will benefit more specifically from this COVID-related recovery, gaming sectors, leisure sectors, sectors that tend to benefit from a pickup in global travel. On the flip side, we've also tended to focus more on defensive segments of the opportunity set, areas of the market that had very strong fundamentals um, leading into this period of volatility. Global housing markets uh, are an example of that. Certain structured product markets that are backed by hard assets uh, continue to be areas where we think investors should be overweighting uh, the yield-oriented segment of their portfolio. And then finally, emerging markets look increasingly interesting to us. These are areas that, again, should benefit from a more synchronized global recovery if it occurs as we expect uh, later this year and well into 2022. So interest rate exposure has actually become slightly less expensive, unlike many other assets uh, recently, given the backup in Treasury yields has created a potentially better entry point for taking interest rate risk. What's the IC's view on this uh, in terms of interest rates and, and what are the implications for portfolio positioning? Sure. So, so I commented on our, our growth outlook. Let me make a, a few comments on inflation to help frame our outlook for you know, higher quality uh, bonds uh, or, or interest rates in general. Uh, we do expect a resurgence in growth, uh, but also a pretty significant pickup in, fl in inflation, at least over the course of the next several months. Uh, but we expect that pickup inflation to be temporary. And we do think there'll be a leveling off somewhere close to central bank target rates. So given at least a base case view that inflation will remain relatively under control, uh, we're beginning to see better value uh, in higher quality segments of the bond market. But again, when you look at high quality bond yields in historical context, they still look a bit uh, expensive, perhaps not surprisingly so, because we expect to see considerable central bank support. Uh, our own central bank, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, we anticipate to remain on hold now uh, in terms of short policy rates, uh, as well as continuing to support uh, high quality bonds out the yield curve through their quantitative easing program, which we expect again to continue uh, well into this year and, and, and likely into the beginning of next year as well. So we were fairly defensive regarding uh, interest rate risk going into this year. After the more recent sell-off, we're becoming more neutral, but still remain uh, a bit more defensive in terms of overall positioning. If we see interest rates continue to rise uh, while we retain our core uh, base case outlook for the growth and inflation environment, we would expect to begin to add back some of that high quality bond uh, exposure that we're currently a bit underweight. So you mentioned PIMCO's inflation forecast. So the baseline uh, is that even though we see a short-term increase in inflation, longer term it remains contained. But I know the IC focuses a lot of its attention on the risks to the baseline scenario. So could you talk a little bit about upside and downside risks to this inflation forecast? So although our base case view is that inflation will remain well contained, there's certainly near-term risks to the upside. Uh, clearly, potential upside pressure from ongoing and significant fiscal uh, stimulus some other um, supply-related factors uh, in the current economy, 
But also when you look over the long run, there's also these powerful disinflationary forces uh, that will exist as well. Technological innovation is one. Also the fact that asset valuations are quite stretched and the next economic slowdown, the next negative shock very well could be accommodated by um, or, or um, lead to uh, more pressure on financial market valuations, which could be disinflationary in nature as well. So longer term, we see pretty balanced inflationary risks, but over the short term, uh, there is this risk of overshooting. And again, the cost to protect against those type of scenarios for investors remains relatively low in a historical context. And we think in a context in, in a context of a multi-asset portfolio, it does make sense to source um, some protection against that type of risk scenario, uh, at least in the current environment. So Dan, one of the things that you highlighted is that we expect central banks generally to remain on hold in terms of interest rate policy. What are the risks in terms of tapering. Clearly, that's on investors' minds. 2013, the taper tantrum uh, created havoc in markets. What's the risk today of tapering by one or more central banks around the globe? Sure. So we do expect um, you know, the, the, the U.S. Federal Reserve to remain on hold in terms of interest rate policy for several quarters, uh, even in the face of strong growth and inflation you know, drifting you know, above their uh, current target. Uh, and we do think that they will look to uh, begin to taper um, some of their balance sheet purchases towards the very end of this year uh, or uh, early in 2022. And this could be a bit difficult for markets uh, because this tapering will likely occur in an environment of very strong growth and at least temporary inflationary pressure. But we also think relative to a few years ago, central banks have learned their lesson. They're going to be very careful to communicate carefully and clearly to markets and be very measured in any type of tapering programs uh, that they embark on later this year and into 2022. So Dan, you've talked a little bit about where PIMCO sees investment opportunities. Could you talk a little bit about how PIMCO goes about finding those opportunities? In other words, Talk a little bit to some of the aspects of PIMCO's investment process that you think are particularly important in the current environment. So what we're looking to do is to use the same type of processes uh, to balance the top-down thinking with good bottoms-up analysis, but really trying to focus on flexibility. With increased flexibility, there's a tremendous opportunity to potentially take advantage of higher returns for the same unit of risk. One area in particular that looks quite attractive is being able to go down the liquidity spectrum. You know, over the course of the last 12 months, uh, there's been a massive policy response to this economic slowdown. And this policy response in many instances has involved the direct purchase of significant fixed income securities, traditional uh, corporate bonds, mortgage bonds, treasury bonds. So by giving up some liquidity, by expanding the opportunity set, investors can generate very attractive returns in certain private segments of the market, in certain segments of the market that are more complex in nature, may provide very attractive risk-adjusted returns. Uh, so customization, flexibility, the ability to exchange liquidity for more robust and higher yield or return are very attractive at the moment uh, in our areas uh, of our investment process that we remain quite focused on. Great. Thanks for all that, Dan. Uh, and thanks to all of you for joining us as well. We'll see you next time.